So I was decorating my phone and then I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and might as well like do a video update on this because I've had it for a few days and I've been using this as my main phone so I thought I'd give you guys an update. So let me just clear this out. Alright, so... Okay, so first things first, the size. That's the first thing you notice about this phone. So according to eBay, the dimensions of this phone is 63 by 124.5 by 16.2 millimeters. It's not a small flip phone, it's quite big. However, I've gotten used to it, so I really don't have problems using this phone. For comparison, just so you can see what I'm talking about, um, let me see here. This is the... Kyocera KYF42C. Most Japanese flip phones would have this kind of form factor, I mean, about the same dimensions. And this is what it looks like right next to the My Folder. The side. I can't even open this phone with one hand. So it's really, as you can see, it's a lot bigger uh, than usual flip phones like this. It's not even small, it's quite long than your usual flip phones from the 2000s. Let me just go ahead and get some specs out of the way. So this one has a almost 4 inches screen. It has 3.97 inches IPS TFT display. It is Android 12 but it's a it's a lighter version of Android. It's stripped down, doesn't have a lot of bloatwares. And usually Go Edition Androids are for phones that just don't have great specs. And that's supposed to help with speed and everything. So it has two gigabytes of RAM. The most common reason why people get a flip phone anyways is if you're going to be cutting down on social media consumption, um, then that should be good enough, honestly, if it's just going to be for browsing some YouTube, maybe listening to music. It also has a 2100 milliamp hour capacity lithium ion battery and it's not a great battery. I think it only lasts me maybe about one to two days if I'm using it all the time for like YouTube and stuff because I'm always on YouTube so that's basically how I, I use the phone so it's either I'm on YouTube or I'm listening to music or you know chatting with some friends on Discord, browsing Reddit, checking my stats on YouTube studio so about one to two days maybe three but that's kind of pushing it. It's for games I wouldn't recommend using this for games to be honest. It's not the fastest phone out there. Maybe you can do some light games, but I can't really recommend anything because I'm not playing games on this phone. Aside from that, it has an 8 megapixel main camera, which let me go ahead and show you. I'm probably gonna try to insert like um, a photo here. Here we go. It's not the best, but it, it's good enough that if you use this as your main phone, you should be good. It also has a front camera, um, and I believe that is 5 megapixel. I'm gonna try to open the camera without showing my face. One second. Alright, so this is the front camera. Hello. <laughs> I'm filming using my iPhone. Um, so yeah, it has a front camera, so you can do like video calls to friends and all that. It has LTE bands. 1357 and 8 and WCDMA band 1. Anyway, it has also water and dust resistance IP52. It has GPS, um, so of course you can use maps. I disabled the maps on this phone, but I can definitely show you. By the way, I have the side button here which I have remapped so that when I click it, it's gonna take me to the setting. I was playing Ghost of Tsushima, so let me let me search Tsushima, Japan. But yeah, it has maps, has GPS. Um, for charging, it has a USB Type C port. It also has a, which is very rare now, it has a 3.5 millimeters audio jack. So you can plug in your earphones, um, but if you don't want to do that, because you know these days headphones with an audio jack is not this common anymore. So if you want to use Bluetooth, that also works. For SIM card, it takes Nano SIM card, which you put here in this tray. And yeah, that's about it for the specs. It's about 180 grams according to the specs. 
um, but if you're gonna be putting a case on, which I did, it, it might feel a little feels a little bit heavier, although the case itself is just really, it's plastic, it's super light, um, but it feels like it's bulkier, obviously, and a little bit heavier, so just keep that in mind. So going back to what I mentioned earlier, which is the key mapper thing, I remapped it using this app called Remap Key Mapper. So I have it remapped to open the settings, and then there are also some other buttons here. Maybe it's not so obvious because I put in stickers, um, but this is like the home button, back, recent. This is the contacts, messaging. Um, this is camera, and this is a shortcut key. For the most part, I have remapped these buttons here so that it opens the apps that I want. So this is what I have in the settings. By the way, timing on this phone took me a few days to get used to it because the the keys are big and are really spaced out, which can be a good thing if if you like that kind of thing. But I've gotten so used to using like narrow Japanese flip phones, and so it took me a while to get used to this again. But now that I'm used to it, I could say it's not bad, and I'm low key. I actually kind of like it. Um, although it does, it, it's a bit more resistive than the typical Japanese flip phone keyboard. So this is the Nova Launcher app that I was talking about. This is the launcher that I'm using. You don't necessarily have to pay the Prime version, it's up to you. Even without it, you can still use it and really use it as your main launcher. And then for the theming, um, I'm using icon packs and I'm currently using this, so you can see. It's kind of cute. So let me show you some other icon packs that I have. So this is Basset, Basset. So this is what it looks like. So I think that's kind of cool. Let's see. This is the crayon icon pack, which I have been using for forever on my Samsung folder too. I think this is cute, so that's that's a crayon icon pack. Kawaii Kon. This is also cute. Mermaid. I also like this. It's kind of dark neon neon colors. So that's what it looks like. So far I haven't encountered apps that don't really work on this phone. And so I think you're not gonna have a problem with that as well. So let me just quickly show you the YouTube experience here. You have also the volume buttons here. So yeah, when it comes to calling, I'm using smart SIM card here in the Philippines and it works. Data also works. But I don't really, I don't really need to text or call anyone. And so as you can see, I have it in airplane mode. The speakers, you have it here at the back with your LED light. The speakers are good enough, um, but it's kind of annoying because when you're listening to music using the speakers, you can't really put the phone down like this. Otherwise, the sound gets muffled. Um, when I'm listening to music, I usually just do this so that this side is facing up. But if you're using headphones, then that's not going to be a problem. Other than that, I really think this is a good in-between phone. So if you're someone who's wanting to downgrade and spend less time on your phone without actually losing access to everything, because I know in this modern age, it's important to also have like maps, for example, or messaging apps to contact people, or banking apps, for example. And so if you're someone who doesn't really want to go full down phone, this would be a great in-between phone. So yeah, I really can't say anything else about this. I really like this phone. I've been enjoying it so far. I'm gonna continue using this for quite some time before I go back to my other flip phones, <laughs> which by the way, I kind of miss. Not gonna lie, I, I really like this one. It's lighter 
it's smaller this one just has more to offer but i still love this and i'm gonna go back to this in the future obviously if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment below and if you like this video um, please like and subscribe and i'm gonna be making more videos like this in the future thank you bye, -bye.